So it's been a weird four days for former Minnesota Fighting Vikings edge rusher Afadio Denbo. So revenge game against his former squad uh, who – I mean, there's some issues that Afadi had with the team at the end. We'll, we'll get to those. Uh, but he had a punt block for a touchdown. He also had a sack. He had a 33 to nothing lead at halftime, and then stuff happened. right? But uh, Fadi played one of the best games of his career. But on Tuesday, he was let go, which was a little bit weird. Also, uh, Ursay... Ursay announcing transactions like he, he's a wannabe Jerry Jones. Eh, get out of here. But uh, they waved uh, Fadi Odenabo. Now, uh, a couple of things here. Afadi could have asked for his release, and the Colts, you know, in tank mode, uh, if letting him go saves a couple of dollars off the cap, sure. Uh, and Afadi may want uh, to have been picked up by a contender. Uh, also, him after that game, I mean, he certainly would have some interest of getting the balance of his contract picked up. So it's possible. Uh, it, it is possible there, or it's a cold ass business. Uh, maybe the Colts just made a business decision. E- either way, it's it, it's whatever. But question. The Minnesota Fighting Vikings need to bring back Afadi Odenabo. I said it. I said it. Now, I, I say this about every ex-Viking or every free agent or every draftable player or every uh, every whatever, right? So it's sort of our thing, sort of our shtick. But uh, Afadi does make a ton of sense, uh, especially down the stretch for the Vikings. Afadi came in as a 2017 seventh-round pick. Back in the day. Out of Northwestern. And he was seen as a, a little bit of a tweener, even though he had great production in the Big Ten. Uh, was he too small for a 4-3 defensive end? Was he not quick enough for an outside linebacker? But he stepped up. And under the tutelage of Andre Patterson, he really contributed right away. As a rotational player in 2019, he put up seven sacks. Uh, by the way, a lot of it uh, was rushing from the interior. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, 2020, so he had a massive opportunity with Daniil Hunter going down with a hernia disc in his neck, and that was, yet, yes, the year that they traded for Unique the freaking Gakwe, but then they tra- retraded him. Uh, but, I mean, Afadi started, right? And he, he, three and a half sacks, it's sort of whatever. He did put up 42 pressures, uh, which was a career high, but sort of is what it is. And then he had Odyssey. He signed with the Giants, ended up with Cleveland, and then this year uh, he was with the Colts, where he was really finding a niche. He put up three and a half sacks uh, as a rotational part-time player on that defense, so it, it is odd. But, yes, when Afadi exited the Vikings, I mean, there, there were some issues, and he he took the Twitter and he basically nuked Eric Sugarman. Uh, he had some other things to say about the coaching staff, but Sugarman's gone. the The training staff is largely been cleaned out. Uh, the coaching staff has obviously had some turnover, unless he has issues with Keenan McCardle, which I mean, no, n- no one does. Actually, no, McCardle's first year was last year, but doesn't matter. But so I, I think that. If Afadi did have reservations about returning to Minnesota, I think they would be smoothed over. And also, the fact that it's a brand new regime does make sense here. Plus, look at the Vikings' edge rusher depth. So, yes, you got Daniil, you got Zedarius Smith. Now, both of them have been dinged up throughout this season. Uh, Daniil with that neck and Zedarius with a knee, uh, which has been uh, problematic all season long. Uh, so, potentially sitting them down the stretch would make some sense. And yeah, you got Wanham and Patrick Jones a second. But like we said, uh, Afadi uh, has experience as a 4-3 hand-the-dirt defensive end, a stand-up outside linebacker. He's played in multiple schemes. He rushed from the interior quite a bit uh, during his massive 2019 season where he put up seven sacks. So, when the Vikings go NASCAR package, kicking Afadi inside and then having Daniil and Zedarius and Wanham and Patrick Jones uh, in there in a mix. Makes a lot of sense. It it absolutely does. But in terms of where he's going to be picked up, now the Giants do have waiver priority over the Vikings, and the Giants make all the sense in the world. So now even though... Afadi signed a free agent deal with the Giants in the offseason 2021, and he was actually let go uh, as they moved uh, cut down to 53-man cuts. It was a different scheme. They were playing a 3-4 and a different regime under Joe Judge. Uh, but now with Brian Dayball, uh, as well as uh, Andre Patterson in the house as a defensive line coach, and they're primarily playing a 4-3, that would make a ton of sense. Uh, plus Afadi reuniting with Dre and also a scheme that he's comfortable with, the Giants wanting as much pass rush as possible for the rest of the season into the playoffs, and also – downloading some information about what he saw against the Vikings, both on defense as well as special teams. So, uh, oh, and Afadi would have a chance for back-to-back revenge games, which would be pretty awesome. But I don't know. That that spot does make a lot of sense. But, I mean, so does Afadi on on the Vikings. So I think the Vikings uh, should consider uh, making a waiver claim. And not saying that he's uh, the Vikings are going to get him because, I mean, he had one of the best games of his career uh, against the Colts. Uh, But, just putting in that waiver claim and also never sleep on, hey, that guy played well against us scouting. I mean, that's how the Vikings ended up with Mike Wallace back in the day. But 
Anyways, uh, your thoughts are thoughts. Uh, Colts wave defensive event of Adio Denebo. Should the Vikings reunited and it feels so good? Let us know your thoughts, our thoughts in the comment section below. Subscribe for daily Vikings takes. Must put the work. Put a little something in the Venmo. But to next time, Skull Production Value.